Hello and welcome to Paul's e-learning podcast. My name is Paul Andrews and this is my podcast about, well, e-learning really, using technology to work smarter, not harder, particularly focusing on free and open source tools. So uh, the idea behind the podcast basically is, well, I was going to write a blog, uh, but after uh, I've recently finished a master's and um, after writing essays and stuff for three years, I said, I've had enough of writing, so I thought I'd try this instead. So every week I'm going to be posting up uh, a new kind of uh, podcast, it, no more than 10-15 minutes long tops because I know everyone's really busy in a short time, but the idea behind it is I'm going to be uh, talking about the work I've been doing uh, on Paul's e-learning resources, showcasing some tools maybe that have been added to the site or maybe that I've been using with various uh, clients and customers. So this week I want to talk about some work I did recently with two primary schools in Cardiff who had been... Uh, lucky enough to uh, get iPads for all of their teachers and their teaching assistants. So the idea uh, behind this was basically to go in and uh, say, OK, we're going to show you some apps that you can use to make the most of these uh, these wonderful new bits of kit that you've got. So the first thing that we actually ended up looking at uh, was an app called Nearpod. And uh, what Nearpod is a free app, so if you do have a, an iPad, uh, you can download it now if you want to. Um, and what Nearpod lets you do, it lets you create a presentation which can then be synchronized with other pupils, other learners, portable devices, their computers, their laptops, their phones, their tablets. So the idea is you as a teacher or a trainer or a presenter can stand up in front of an audience, in front of a class, deliver a presentation, and the same slides that you're showing on the screen are also shown on the pupil screen, on the audience member's screen as well. Um, in addition to that, though, uh, it also lets you create little quizzes and tests uh, through the presentation. So you can uh, show a couple of slides off and then at, say to your audience or say to your pupils, OK, I want you to answer me some questions based upon this thing. And then Nearpod has this built in quiz system. So it will pause the presentation and let pupils, students, learners answer these questions or engage in activities that you want them to engage with. Once they've done that, uh, what Nearpod does is it basically gives you, the teacher, you, the lecturer, you, the educator, uh, a screen uh, with all of your pupils, your audience members, results in, and you can see the work that they've done. And if you want to, then you can then display that on the board or not. It's entirely up to you. But it basically lets you uh, do formative type of assessments um, in the middle of uh, a presentation. So, it, yeah, it's, it's kind of cool. It lets you do, uh, like, votes and polls. Uh, people can annotate drawings. They can, you know, scribble on things. Um, or they can just answer kind of multiple-choice questions or even free-form questions. So, yeah, Nearpod, free of charge, really handy. And the other thing it lets you do, which is kind of cool, is if you don't have the equipment in the classroom, it lets you set up homework Nearpods so that you can create a presentation and then say to your learners, um, hey, check this out at home if you want to, or the library or whatever it is you can you know get onto the computer or a smartphone and they can access the presentation in their own time and again they can still do those quizzes those questions those activities and Nearpod will still collect all of the information for you so you can set it as homework and then give it a week or so then come back and see how your learners are getting on and then you know if you need to speak to them about some various bits and bobs maybe they haven't understood a particular concept well then you know you've got the freedom and the ability to do that so yeah so Nearpod's kind of cool um check it out if you've uh, uh, if you've got the right equipment. Okay, so after Nearpod, we then started looking at uh, apps that people could use to create content. Um, and the main one that we used for this was an app called Book Creator. Now, Book Creator isn't free. Uh, it's, a, it's a couple of pounds, but it's a very nice app because it, it quickly and easily lets you make electronic books. And these books can contain text, images, sounds, and videos as well. So it's not just kind of static you know, text. Um, so yeah, Book Creator is really cool. And what we basically said was that we'd use Book Creator as our kind of foundation, and then we would go and have a look at other apps that we could use to create content which could then go into Book Creator. So Book Creator on its own is a fantastic app. It, it's basically like making a, a digital scrapbook if you like. And you could, you know, you could conceivably give this to your pupils, to your students and say, hey, you know, wander around the school, wander around the college, take some photographs, record some interviews and make a little interactive book, which then can be shared and published online and, you know, uh, viewed by anyone or anyone that you want to be able to view it. Um, but so we looked at Book Creator, but then we started looking at some specific apps that let people uh, make 
different types of pictures. So the first one we looked at was an app called Pic Collage. And uh, as the name suggests, it lets you make collages out of pictures. And these pictures can be off the internet or they can be ones that you've taken on the, on the iPad's camera or ones that you've taken previously. Um, but the idea is you can use this uh, app um, to combine several photographs into one. Incidentally, if you don't have an iPad but you fancy the sound of this, there's a website, free, a free website called PicMonkey, which uh, has the same functionality. So you go to PicMonkey.com and you can then upload a series of photographs and turn those into a collage as well. But we, for the purpose of the training, we were using iPads, so we just wanted to use apps on the iPad um, that the schools had already installed. So we used PicCollage for that. And then we were able to save the resulting collages and put them into the book. Uh, into the books we've made using Book Creator, which was kind of handy. Please hang up and try again. So, so after Pic Collage, we then moved on to an app called Comic Life. Uh, Comic Life uh, basically lets you make uh, comics. You and your pupils make comics. Really nice website. Really, really easy to use. Uh, really nice uh, app. Sorry. Really, really easy to use. Um, the idea is you can install it, choose from a series of templates, or design your own if you're feeling particularly brave. Um, and then you can then add in speech bubbles, take photographs and make a comic. And the nice thing about uh, Comic Life is it will automatically crop the photographs for you and add filters to those photographs so that they match the theme of the comic that you've picked. So if you've picked kind of like a dark and mysterious uh, kind of theme, it will add uh, like a grey filter to some of the photographs. If you've chosen a more colourful theme, it will emphasise the colours and brighten things up a little bit. So it's a really nice uh, app. And again, it's one of those ones where you could say to your pupils, we're going to be Learn it, we'll learn about something in class and then I'm going to give you half an hour to go away and take some photographs and uh, you know, add some speech bubbles and make a comic demonstrating what you've learned. Um, one particular example of this, um, one teacher was telling me they've been doing um, mini beasts, uh, teaching their pupils mini beasts in their, in their class, little in insects. So they were going to say to their pupils, right, have some iPads, go outside and take some photographs of insects, these mini beasts, and then make a little comic based on the photographs that you've taken, you know, lady beer, ladybirds, earwigs, and that kind of stuff. Um, so yeah, it's kind of cool. Uh, so, so if you've got the iPad, check out Comic Life. It's, 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 a, nice, it's a nice little app. Um, after that, we then turned on to mind maps. Um, and again, there's loads and loads of mind map creation tools out there. Lots of really good websites uh, that let you make mind maps for free as well. Mind42.com is one of my favourite uh, on the iPad, we were looking at an app called Poplet. And there was a free app of Poplet, Poplet Lite. And there was a paid for app as well. Again, cost a couple of pounds for the paid version. Um, but the the idea behind this basically was that the teachers wanted to facilitate a class discussion and take ideas from their class. But they wanted to be able to walk around. And as the pupils were coming up with things, the teacher wanted to use the iPad to put all those ideas into a mind map which would then be shown on the screen uh, so the pupils can see it in action. Um, so we were lucky enough to have Apple TVs in the room, so we, we were able to do this. We were able to kind of beam the, the actual picture from the iPad straight onto a big TV. Uh, but Poplar, it's a really nice app. It's very simple to use. Uh, it lets you insert photographs, uh, videos, sound clips, uh, web links, all that kind of stuff uh, that you'd expect. Um, and again, if you've got an iPad and you want to do mind maps uh, with your class, um, I'd recommend checking it out. It's, it's really kind of it's handy. So after that, we then looked at uh, some more apps that could be used to make videos. Uh, and again, these videos could be put into the book creator or they could be shared on YouTube. And um, the, the, there was two apps we looked at. Uh, one was called Morpho. Now, Morpho is a free app and it lets you take a photograph of a person or well, anything really and then turn that photograph into a 3D animated face model. So you can then speak into the iPad and it will then animate the face as if it was speaking the words you're actually saying. Um, so you could use this for making talking heads. But equally, you know, if, you've, if you're teaching younger children, they could take a photograph of uh, their favourite cuddly toy, for example, or the class pet or whatever it might be. And you could actually then animate it and make it talk. So it's kind of cool. However, by far and away, uh, the most popular app of the day was an app called Puppet Pals. And uh, it's a free app. There's a paid for version as well. But Puppet Pals lets pupils and, and teachers uh, create electronic puppet shows and it, you do this but it gives you a, a whole lot of characters like fairy tale characters and the best way I can describe it is it's kind of like um, having the old-fashioned kind of paper dolls 
So the idea is you pick these kind of paper characters out um, and then you pick a set for them. And then you record the video by record. It records your voice, but then as you're speaking, you can use your fingers to just move these characters up and around and around the move them around the set, so that they, you know the mouths don't move or anything. But for little children, it's great because what it uh, allows you to do is, uh, well, one teacher said to me they're they're currently doing fairy tales in their in their class, so she was going to use this to let the pupils make their own fairy tale videos. Uh, by kind of do, doing a storyboard on pen and paper first in the class, having a class discussion, and then saying, right, you've got 10 minutes on the iPad to make yourself a little cartoon. And um, these these the resulting videos can then, you know, they, yes, they can be embedded into a book creator, but they can even be shared on, you know, on, on the class blog, or on the YouTube channel, or, you know, whatever it, whatever it might be that you want to you do. So that's about all we've got time for this week. So, um, like I said, I'm going to keep these podcasts short, uh, do them once a week. If you've got any comments or feedback, please do feel free to get back to me about any of the methods listed below. I hope you've enjoyed the podcast, and I hope to be talking to you very, very soon. Oh, 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 oh